most part not very antiquated. You know, they were building it in the 1930s and 40s, and they had very antiquated uh, everything, right? So the point is that when, when energy goes off, you know, for example, our summer home is uh, in the hills, you need five pumps to get water there. Any, any one of those, you know, electricity, without electricity, but then when it's repaired, any one in the chain will basically, you go without water for a month, right? A couple of things happen. First of all, a lot of uh, donations of water systems, portable water systems, and, and what have you. Uh, so people are more, more ready. Secondly, is there's a, a whole movement of community initiated a center for resiliency, right? Where water and, and some living health and alternative energy and so forth are being put in place throughout. Some of them with support from the government, some of them are local initiative. But uh, I just learned uh, last week that that those 270 water systems got a grant. Well, actually, they didn't get a grant. They, they, you know, there was a letter of intent from FEMA for mitigation, not from FEMA, for Port Three, and then and then FEMA, to, to provide uh, local community mitigation measures, they passed the second round for a grant of 24 million or so to modernize the generators that will keep pumping the water with solar panels and so, you know underground you know wiring and all that. So there's some mitigation and modernization efforts going on for the water. But water, just like energy, in the popular consciousness, that you can erase that. People, people are going to be ready for the next one in a better way. I'm not sure 100%, but in a better way. Let's take one more from Well, you want to jump on it? Yes. I just, uh, there is a, a uh, conclusion here, there is a correlation between uh, water quality, contamination of water, and death. And it seems to me, that the most critical situation in terms of health after Marina had to do with the lack of availability of health services and medicines. That means people get contaminated for sure due to water or due to food poisoning. But the problem was the lack of health service. Because if you get poisoned and you have a health service, you don't die. I don't have evidence of dying directly because they got contaminated. But I know the lack of health services because hospitals had to close. And there was lack of medicine and lack of access to health services. And I think that's extremely critical. That's a chain. But a lot of people died because they, they couldn't get their services, particularly the elderly, those who were having uh, dialysis and things like that, that they have continued need continued services, they, they couldn't, and for the lack of services, that's a big uh, uh, factor. So that leads it to power. So, thank you, Ismael. Frank, uh, so you have a question for, yes, um, for yourself on the panel? Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you know, it was really great that, you know, Mr. Centro's uh, data portal seems, uh, you know, quite useful, and you know, when I speak with the people from DHS, I get, I'm, I'm told over and over that they don't really necessarily need more research. They just want existing research to be used to, for better decisions and better planning. So the question is, at the moment, how connected is the rebuilding process with Central? To what extent is the things you've learned over a decade or more, let's say, is being used through the process of this. That's a very interesting question. Uh, okay. we, we, as I said, we work through some networks that exist in Puerto Rico. We're not trying to go there and create networks. So the IDEA Comun groups are the planners. They are 800 members of the local planner association. And what we're trying to do with them is to have courses online. We just did one for mitigation. As a result of that particular effort, $500 million in proposal for non-profit and municipalities was submitted to the mitigation competition. So that's the approach that we have. So we have courses coming, Federico is working one on, court, uh, on R3, which is a program for uh, housing, uh, renovation, rehabilitation, and relocation where people can. 
We have uh, the faith-based community. There are 16 teachers. There are, they have a coalition. They're in the coalition. We have the Montessori schools. There are 50 schools throughout the island. They are, well, they are sort of a, a non-profit runs that. They are part of the coalition. I can go on the list. So what we try to do is find from them what courses they need to affect uh, social uh, change at the local level. Right? And then we work backwards to create first the data, the layers. Second, they, they find the professionals that will do the training, the, the online training, because that's what people want. Uh, then we have the webinars, and then finally we have labs that are run by our staff as to how you do those maps so that if you have a local community, you can you know, play with the, with the geography and play with the layers that you want to use and create your own dashboard for data. Why is this important? I just found out from some of our colleagues that they're doing a needs analysis for a proposal for X, Y, and Z, and they found that in the central mountains, the per capita income uh, uh, for, uh, for working age people, say 18 to uh, 65, is four and five thousand dollars a year. That's third world, third world territory. Okay. So now I know we have to do a report on that because uh, it's correlated to the, the the decline of agriculture, the abandonment of the school system in the countryside, and so on and so forth. So uh, they have the short answer is that we're trying the best we can, uh, and you know if. If we were to get more funding, we will do more. But right now, you know, we're doing what we can with the partners that we that we have at the ground level, and hopefully this will take off as soon as we get an injection of, of on all levels. Because, for example, on anything that is participation participation in federal grants, say it's in the ER, it's a whole complexity of technical capacities that our nonprofits don't have where it's mitigation or CDDR, so you need to create those courses. The other way to do that is by finding examples, so you have to look at studies. So we're in that process right now. In any case, uh, you know, two years out, I don't know where is the planner here? Two years out, I think we're on track, but it's a long, long learning curve, and, and sort of, thank for the question. But I wish I, was, I could be more positive on, on the next step, but that's where we are. Thank you. Someone you want to uh, uh, okay. So, uh, great. Uh, quick. This, yeah, these uh, social models are very, very interesting. How do you consider population mobility due to all the hazards that have been identified, particularly 70,000 landslides, plus the uh, flood plains that have been expanded? There is a lot of mobility, not only because of that, because of the economy, too. back and forth. Yeah, I think for you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, in, in the work that I've done, particularly in this baseline resilience index, for example, um, it is a difficult thing to take into account, but there are some um, there are some indicators that help describe that. For example, um, there are some census variables that describe how long somebody's lived in this, in the, in the state, in the county, and we can use that as uh, a proxy, for example, to see you know, how, if this person is attached to that community, either by way of social networks, or do they have to move for, for one reason or another. Um, I will say that, that it's, it remains a challenge to, to try to take account of those in the diaspora. Um, even local mobility, not necessarily outside of the island, right? Um, it's, as, as far as I can uh, see as of now, we have some indicators, like this data point, for example. Um, but in terms of um, the actual processes, the social processes, not just a lot of these metrics that, that I've shown with these maps kind of show a snapshot of time, or this is the, the structure at this given time, uh, but it's not showing an interaction in a process, especially together with other um, variables. So um, that's kind of what I'm hoping to work towards. Right now, those are, those are some of the things that we can try to do for now. I think I'm going to answer that question with a different, with a different data set, <laughs> if I can find it uh, in a second. Well, the point is that Puerto Rico is experiencing a depopulation process that is very 
Oops, I don't have that graph here. <coughs> but in any case, uh, two thirds of the Puerto Rican population now live in the United States, and only one third in Puerto Rico, and that's a result of this process of displacement. Josie Maria, we estimate about 140,000 right post Maria, but in the whole in the whole prior decade with the economic crisis, about a million people. But we have maps that will look at the at the at the block level of the loss of population. I didn't bring it here, so I'm sorry. Apologize for that. Thank you. Well, just to a closing here, uh, back to the first question, how all these great academic work uh, can be used uh, in the, and will have legacy. Uh, our experience uh, has been that we actually want that to happen, that is, the, the, the science is used. Uh, and the way to, the way we are approaching this is to work closely with the stakeholders. Our partner is PREPA, our partner is the Energy Bureau, our partners are the Puerto Rico Authority. Uh, so this investment of talent, intellectual you know, capacity, really goes uh, in the long-term planning by the local stakeholders. And uh, that's, uh, we find that interaction so far very uh, enriching both sides. The change of information on data, it fine tunes the the, our approaches goes back to the students, the message that we want this information to, to be used. So for that reason, we really need to, uh, to find a technical solution. We need to get the, 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 the people involved, the sort of aspect of the problem uh, on it. And with that, we will close. Thank you very much, guys.
Built in, and you cannot move. 